So, the first Sunday in a brand new year. Can you believe that it's 2018? I said last Sunday, do you remember where you were on the first Sunday of the year 2000? Do you remember when everyone said the world was going to collapse and fall apart because of Y2K? Do you remember that? Well, look where we are. (laughs) We're still here. And God is still doing some things in us. Like the first Sunday of every new year, I think it's an opportunity for us to think a little bit about the the, the 12 months that are ahead. The first Sunday of a new year is often one of those Sundays where we start to think about things that maybe we'd like to change about our lives. How many of you made New Year's resolutions? Wow. How many of you never make resolutions? Yeah, okay, all right. Believe it or not, you're part of an an, an interesting group of folks. I did a little research, and, and here's what I discovered about New Year's resolutions. Here's the most common New Year's resolutions for 2018. Eat healthier is the most popular one. One, two, three, duh. Get more exercise is the second most popular one. Save more money. Those three are tied. We'll try it again. One, two, three. Duh. Duh. The next one is focus on self-care, specifically get more sleep. How many of you would make that resolution? Uh Read more is the next one. Make new friends, learn a new skill, get a new job, take up a new hobby. And the one that is the second to the top three are, I don't plan on making New Year's resolutions. (laughs) I thought that was rather interesting. It's interesting to me that when we talk about change at the beginning of a new year and we talk about New Year's resolutions, we often talk about external things. Think about that list that's up there. There are several external things. Eat healthier, get more exercise, save more money, read more, make new friends, learn a new skill, get a new job, take up a new hobby. Those are often all external things. But it's intriguing to me that when the Bible talks about change, when the Bible talks about life change, It talks more about internal things than it does about external things. We approach the very first Sunday of a brand new year and we think about all the things we'd like to change and our society and our life always has us looking external. The Bible talks about internal change. When we ask the question of the Bible, how can I change my life? It always points us inside first. There are multiple examples of that in the Bible. The one I want us to circle for the next few weeks is an experience that occurred in the life of the people of God. It is the reign of Solomon. It is the pinnacle of Israel's place and history in the world. No king had more power than Solomon. No king had more wealth than Solomon. No king had more wives than Solomon. 900 and some. Think about that, fellas. It was the pinnacle of Israel's history. And at the core of what Solomon wanted to do was something that his father David had asked him to do, and that is to build a temple for God. In Jerusalem, uh, the center place where God would be worshipped. And so the temple was constructed with the resources that his father David had made available and some things that he added himself. And when it was finally constructed, it was time to dedicate the temple. It was time to go find the Ark of the Covenant. And if, and if you know something about that or if you don't, the Ark of the Covenant was this incredible box 
golden box that was built to contain what? The Ten Commandments. It had been housed in a tent for a long, long time. They called it a tabernacle. Now that there is a a temple in Jerusalem, now that there is a, a place where God would be worshiped, it was time to go and get the ark. And it was time to bring the ark into the temple to its permanent resting place. And as they did this, there was great celebration. Incredible music, 120 trumpet players. I think it's a mistranslation. I think it's trombone players. <laughs> Brass, one way or the other. Huh? And, and incredible numbers of sacrifices being made. And at one particular moment, as the ark is being taken into the temple to its resting place, King Solomon kneels in front of the people and lifts up his hands and prays a long prayer of dedication. You think I pray long. Read 2 Chronicles chapter 6. That's a long, long, long prayer. And when Solomon is done praying, fire from heaven falls on the temple, consumes the sacrifices, and the glory of God, the glory of God often is symbolized with fire and cloud in the Bible. Fire comes from God into the temple, fills the temple with the glory of God, so much so that both the, fir- the king's version, the first king, second king's version of this, and the second chronicles version of this say that the priests were unable to perform their duties because the power and presence of God was so strong in that place. You getting the image? So they continue this worship time for 14 days. Imagine. A church service that went 14 days. Wow. Want to try it? (laughs) After those 14 days were over, Solomon dismisses the people. Early in 2 Chronicles chapter 7, the story says that Solomon dismisses the people, and as they go, they go away joy-filled and happy and content and amazed and awed at the experience of worship that they have just had. A short time later, not sure how long, 2 Chronicles 7 doesn't tell us, short time later, Solomon has returned to his royal palace. And one night, God appears to him in a dream. And God speaks to him. If you have your Bibles, 2 Chronicles chapter 7 We're going to read verses 11 through 22. It's on page 680 in the Pew Bibles. Electronic version, we're using the New International Version today. So if you have your Bibles or the Pew Bibles, 2 Chronicles chapter 7, beginning in verse 11. Friends, would you stand as an act of worship and reverence for the reading of God's word? When Solomon had finished the temple of the Lord and the royal palace... And had succeeded in carrying out all that he had in mind to do in the temple of the Lord and in his own palace. The Lord appeared to him at night and said, I have heard your prayer and have chosen this place for myself as a temple for sacrifices. When I shut up the heavens so that there is no rain or command locusts to devour the land or send a plague among my people... If my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then I will hear from heaven and I will forgive their sin and will heal their land. Now my eyes will be open and my ears attentive to the prayers offered in this place. I have chosen and consecrated this temple so that my name may be there forever. My eyes and my heart will always be there. As for you... If you walk before me faithfully as David your father did and do all I command and observe my decrees and laws, I will establish your royal throne as I covenanted with David your father when I said, you shall never fail to have a successor to rule over Israel. But if you turn away and forsake the decrees and commands I have given you and go off to serve other gods and worship them, 
Then I will uproot Israel from my land, which I have given them, and will reject this temple I have consecrated for my name. I will make it a byword and an object of ridicule among all peoples. This temple will become a heap of rubble. All who pass by will be appalled and say, Why has the Lord done such a thing to this land and to this temple? People will answer, Because they have forsaken the Lord, the God of their ancestors, who brought them out of Egypt and have embraced other gods, worshiping and serving them. That is why he brought all this disaster upon them. Sisters and brothers, the word of God for the people of God. Together we say, thanks be to God. You may be seated. Now I want you to see a couple things. I, I, I want you to see the connection in that text, in that story. As we've been, we've been talking about internal things. And the, the, the call to, to, from the Bible to, to change from the inside out instead of the outside in. I want you to get the connection between the misery, locusts, plagues, no rain, famine, drought. I want you to get the connection between those things. And what God calls them to do when those things occur. Did you catch it? When those things occur, God says, I want you to do this. Read it with me. If my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then will I hear from heaven and forgive their sin and will heal their land. You get the connection? When, when life is miserable on the outside, turn inside. When life is miserable in a whole lot of ways externally, start to change it by looking on the inside first. Now, I want to be clear about something. If you, a casual reading of this text would suggest that God kind of randomly decides one day to bring drought. A casual reading of that text suggests that if God has a whim one day and has an overabundance of locusts, he might choose to send them upon the land to get rid of them. A casual reading of the text would suggest that, that when God just seems to want to have a little bit of fun, that he'll just send a plague or a pestilence among the people. If you don't take the time, this is why Bible study, sisters and brothers, look at me, this is why Bible study is so critically important. Because if you just read that text for what it is, you could come off with it knowing that, well, God just seems to be pretty random right there. God seems to be kind of a mean guy. But if you know the story, if you've taken the time to read the scripture, you know consistently that if God brings drought, if God brings locusts, if God brings pestilence in any kind of a way or plague, it's because God's people have walked away from him. Those things are always responses from God, not initiated by the whim of God. Are you tracking with me? The people have stepped away and if, that's why I ask us to read all of those verses, because what you get in the rest of those verses beyond 2 Chronicles chapter 7, verse 14, is this business of, if you stay faithful, he says to Solomon, this is going to go good. If you step away, not so much. It's going to get hard. And people will look at this incredible temple, and people will look at this land that's been decimated, and the, the temple that's collapsed and will say, why did this happen? Why would God do that? And the people will answer, because we walked away from God. Because we walked away from God's ways. And in response, remember I said last Sunday, if you were here, that there are always consequences to our choices. That God allows consequences to our choices. Consequences become classrooms if we'll let them. But there are always consequences to our choices. And if we choose to walk away from God, there will be consequences in our lives. If those things happen, 
If the misery of life is around us, how do we respond? God says, don't try to change the external things. Look first inside. Work on the inside part of you. Humble yourself before God. Pray. Talk to God. Seek God's face. Seek all of God's favor for all of you. And turn from your wicked ways. Repent. Choose to go in healthy ways and not wicked ones. And look at what God will do. In response to the work inside, what does God do? Hear, forgive, and heal the land. I, I want to spend the, the next few weeks here, these early weeks of 2018, unpacking that verse a little bit. I want to spend the next few weeks talking about the way a focus inside, internal, can help externals change in a lasting way. For those of you that did make resolutions, do, do we want to, to, to talk a little bit about how long you think it will be until that resolution fades to the background? Okay, you don't want to talk about that. <laughs> hmm. How many of you would say that there have been multiple occasions where you've made the same resolution on January 1st that you made the January 1st before? See, see when we try to focus on external things, it doesn't last. It's only going to last when we start to get the inside of us right. When we get that right, then that allows the external parts of us to get right as well. So I want you to take this with you. Change that lasts happens best inside out rather than outside in. Change that lasts happens best inside out rather than outside in. I want to unpack that. We're going to talk next week about humility. We're going to talk the week after that about prayer. We're going to talk the week after that about what does it mean to seek the face of God. The week after that, we're going to explore that great story in Luke's gospel about the prodigal son. What does it mean to repent? And then we're going to talk a little bit about, look what God does. Look how the externals change because of the internal work that has been done. Now, to start this whole process today, I, I, I want to direct your attention to your, to your bulletins where I have a response to grace card in there for you. I, some of you that have been here for a little while might remember that we, 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 we've visited here before. We've, we've used the response to grace cards before. And, and I invited you several times in the last couple of years to, to bring your, your, your commitments to the things that are on this list, and I'm going to go through them in a minute, to bring them forward and place them in this box. And if you can remember, that box has set right here. And it's set there before the altar of God as a testimony to the commitments that we've made. Now, I need to ask your forgiveness for something. As one of your shepherds, whose primary responsibility it is to proclaim the word, I have done a terrible job of holding you accountable to this. And when I say you, I include myself. I, I've done a horrible job of holding us accountable to this. Sunday by Sunday, that sits up here, and, and I come up and look at it when I walk up on Sunday morning, and I say something like this, oh, because yet again, the message has come together, and we aren't going to talk about this. Will you forgive me? Forgive me as one of your shepherds for not holding us accountable to the things that we need to be doing 
for the internal work to happen. Now, I want you to put that card in your hand because there's a couple of words I want to circle for you on it. First of all, notice the title of it. What does it say? Response to what? Ah, it, it, it doesn't say earning grace. It doesn't say qualifying for grace. It doesn't say what I have to do in order to get God to love me. I don't think that would fit. You, you with me? It says a response to grace. A, rea- a recognition that you and I are here by the grace of God. You and I live because of grace. You and I are able to experience life together because of grace. We are able to say that when we draw our last breath here, we'll draw our first breath in the presence of Jesus Christ for all of eternity. We get to say that because of the grace of God. Because God has chosen to give us what we don't deserve. Mercy and grace. And all of that is through a guy that died on a cross named Jesus Christ. What we do in the way we live our Christian lives, in the way we engage each other, in the way we engage the world, all of that is a response to what God has already done. Are you with me? I don't want you to think of this list as something that I got to do this in order for God to love me, in order for God to be close to me. No. Good news is, as I said last week, God loves you just the way you are. But he loves you too much to leave you that way. He wants to make you just like Jesus. And the way God does that is by inviting us to put ourselves in some specific places. And if we'll put ourselves in these specific places, we will meet God there. The Bible is absolutely clear that if we want to come face to face with God, we need to be in worship. If we want to come face to face with God, we need to get into scripture so that the word that God has given to us becomes part of us. If we want to meet God face to face, no better place to do it than in connection with one another and in prayer. If if we want to meet God face to face, one of the primary ways is for us to be able to give ourselves away for the good of another, just like God gave himself away in Jesus Christ for us. You with me? One of the best ways for us to come with face to face with this God that wants to work on us inside out is to be extravagantly generous, to recognize the things that God has given to us are things that we get to give to others. And when we do that, we meet God face to face. Are you with me? The, the promise, the, the, the place to begin in allowing God to work inside out is to put ourselves consistently in the places where God promises to be. And if we will do that, the degree to which we do that is the degree to which God is able to work on us from the inside out. Are are you tracking with me? The other word I want to circle here is at the end of the first sentence, in response to God's amazing grace, I will... Uh Uh-huh. I will strive to. This isn't an exercise in New Year's resolutions. This isn't something that when you say, yes, I'll do that, and when you don't do it tomorrow, you throw it out. It is not an expectation of perfection. It is a choice to say, I am going to direct my life consistently in this direction. I'm going to do everything in my power to put myself in the places where God promises to be as consistently as I am able so that God can work on me from the inside out so that it becomes something that directs what I do. You you don't always have a chance to see it (coughs) unless you go upstairs. But upstairs in the AV booth, turn around and wave at those folks up there. Go ahead, turn around, wave. Hey, hi, everybody. Okay, up there on the wall... The back wall of the church, there are six of these response to grace cards. And every person that's part of the AV team has signed one of these. And all of the other members of the AV team have signed each other's cards. You you with me? What does that say to you? It says that we're going to make a commitment to start here. 
And we're going to hold each other accountable to make sure that all of us are living out this process. Huh. Can I suggest to you that when, when, when you and I place our cards in here, it is, a, it is a choice to say, God, I, I will strive to put myself in the places where you promised to be so you can work on me from the inside out. And by placing it in here on top of other, everybody else's, you're saying, I want my brothers and sisters to hold me accountable. When was the last time you asked a brother or a sister how much they've been praying? When was the last time you actually said to somebody, tell me about what you're hearing from God in the study of of his word? Oh, oh, see, we don't talk about that stuff. (laughs) We we talk about what did the preacher have on at church on Sunday? Was was the preacher good or not? I didn't like that song that Sam sang. That's the kind of stuff we talk about when it comes to church. What if we could talk instead about this stuff? What if we could talk instead about how are you, how's your prayer life? How, when was the last time you gave yourself away for somebody? Do, do you know something about the generosity of God? How's that being shown in, in the way? What if we gave ourselves permission to ask ourselves those questions in 2018? Do you suppose that in 2019 we might be in a different place? Hmm. What if we trusted God? Because as we get the inside right... The outside stuff changes. I had an illustration of this just this past week. I went to the doctors this week. And it was one of those cold mornings. And I had on my, my favorite fleece vest. I, this is my favorite for a couple of reasons. Number one, it fits. <laughs> Number two, it was a gift from my bride. Number three, I just like the color. So I had it on. And, and I was at Dr. Fee's, and he needed to listen to a couple things. And so he said, I need you to take that off, and I need to get your shirts untucked so that he can do some listening. And so, so he did that, and I, I took it off, and I took it off kind of quickly because I, I wanted to, to, to hurry up for him. So we, we talked about it, and, and, and he left, and, and I went to put it back on. And, and, I, and I put it on, and... And was getting all set to go, and it was cold, so I started to to, to button to, and, and I and I couldn't find the zipper. I, I tried hard. I, oh man, you mean to tell me off my favorite vest, the zipper broke, and the zipper fell. So I started. I got down on my hands and knees in the exam room, looking for the zipper, and I stood up and I. And I went to put my hands in the, in the pockets, and, and they're not there. And I looked down a little more, and I thought, oh, huh. I, I have this thing on inside out. And so I, 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 I turned it around the way it was supposed to be. And I, and I found the, the zipper and <sighs> now this is a true story. I, I can't imagine what Dr. Fee would have thought if he'd have walked in that exam room and I'd have been on all fours. He'd have gone and got the defibrillator. Okay? But, but it occurred to me that when the inside is in the right place, the outside works. When the inside's in the right place, the outside works. So let me ask you this morning to consider getting the inside in the right place, to take the first step to getting the inside in the right place by saying, Lord, for 2018, I will strive to worship weekly, to read the Bible and pray daily, to be in relationship with others, to encourage spiritual growth, to serve others with my time and talent, to generously give as God has been generous to me 
and to work cooperatively with other Christians for God's purpose in the world. By the way, every Sunday, those are printed for you on the sermon note insert. Every Sunday, those are at the bottom of the sermon note insert so that we can stay focused on the things that will help us be what God wants us to be. So we're going to sing. I'm going to take this off because it's hot already. We're going to sing together. And as we sing together, I'm going to ask you to take a minute, print your name, date it, and bring it forward and place it in the offering box, in the, in the proclamation box. I choose to build my life here, to work from the inside out. And in doing that, I'm giving each one of you permission. When I put my card in here, look at me. When I put my card in here, I'm giving you permission to say to, to me, Pastor David, what are you hearing from God in the study of his word? I, I'm not exempt from this. God help you if I'm not doing this. God help us if Sam and I both aren't doing this. So as we sing, Sam's going to come and we're going to sing. And, and as we do, as the spirit would lead, you come and say, Lord Jesus, heal me from the inside out. Renew me from the inside out. And we'll talk about the other things as the days come. Would you stand and let's sing together.